Hey what's up guys, uh, this is the continuation of episode 3 of this DRF tutorial playlist. In this video we will customize the user class. Uh, we will try to understand the necessity of customizing uh, the user class and then finally we will migrate all the tables to the Postgres database which was uh, set up in the last episode of this playlist. If you have missed that, you can go find episode 3 of this DRF tutorial series playlist. Now, I'm sure that uh, that will help you to understand how we can connect Postgres SQL database with DRF. Now, let's get that straight. If we run migration right now, what happens, Django will create a user table and its authentication and authorization related tables automatically uh, into our database. The built-in user table that Django creates has around uh, 10, 11 regular fields like first name, last name, email, etc. But let's assume that we are not fully satisfied with the fields this built-in user class provides. For that reason, I want to customize this built-in user class. Uh, what I mean by customization is um, I want to maybe add or detect fields or like I want to log in by phone number, maybe not by the username etc etc uh, and i can do these kinds of modification by customizing this built-in user class and after finishing all of that uh, finally we can run our migration okay make sense uh, it is always a good idea uh, to customize the user class at the very beginning of a big project this customization actually help us modify the uh, user table anytime later in the project with no hassle. So please do that if you are planning to build a scalable project. Uh, uh, to achieve this customization of this built-in user class, uh, we have to write two different classes okay, on our own. Uh, so the first one would be user class, um, our own user class, and the second one would be uh, our own manager class. Okay? Uh, I, I know uh, these, uh, these are sounding very scary, but uh, do not get overwhelmed. Um, this, is, this is pretty easy. All you have to do uh, just to uh, just uh, follow along this video. Okay? Um, uh, now let's create an app uh, called Core and uh, um, so and then we're gonna write uh, those user class manager class blah blah thing into this um, core app okay so let's um, open the terminal and type Django admin start app core so I'm gonna type Django admin start app core and this will um, create an app I'm waiting okay so as you can see it has created an app called Core. Now let's open up this Core um, app and okay, uh, here's the thing. Uh, you might be wondering why I have to uh, create an app named Core. It could be anything, but this is the convention um, uh, for the user table, so you can uh, name this as Core. Okay. Now I can open up this models.py file and here I have to write my own classes, okay? So as you know that we are going to uh, prepare two classes, one is user class, another one is manager class. I have already written this code for us so we can uh, save some time. I'm gonna paste that in. Now you might be wondering what is going on here. I will explain, uh, so don't worry, okay? Let me minimize those first, okay? So as I, um, planned uh, we are uh, writing uh, user class over here and a manager class over here okay the name could be anything but I have given the custom user manager you, this can also be said a custom user but let's say user class and the custom user manager okay so those uh, two classes I have promised that I'm going to write right uh, the, uh, I have to import models and I have to also import uh, three uh, parent classes such as abstract base user permissions mixing and base user manager okay so and those are gonna be inherited from Django contrib dot or dot models okay now what's inside this user class we need to find out so this user class is going to be inherited from abstract base user and permissions mixing um, uh, class let me open up okay and then finally um, uh, you will uh, define your regular fields I have written email first name last name mobile blah 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 uh, if you think that you want to use Django admin uh, then you can specify those is stuff is active and is super user if you don't want to use Django admin then you don't uh, don't need these fields okay at all and uh, 
I have specified email as the uh, username field. Um, you can specify anything, but whatever you specify as your username field, you have to spe specify that at the bottom over here, and you have to also say that as unique equal to true or DB index equal to true. Okay, uh, doesn't matter if it is email or mobile number for, but for my case, it is email. Okay. Um, and then uh, you have to also you can also specify um, the required fields um, over here required fields equal to first name last name and mobile for me if we if we want to create a user or super user through terminal then these required fields uh, are going to be considered okay so now that you know how we can write a user class, it, this is time for us to write the manager class, okay? Uh, but uh, there should be a connection between uh, the user class and the manager class, and how we connect that, I, we should say objects equal to my manager class name, okay? Uh, whatever the name is given here should be the name over here as well. And then, uh, because I have said uh, custom user manager, uh, so I need to write a manager class with the same name, like custom user manager. So if I open up this manager class, uh, there will be three uh, definition. The first two is, uh, th I think the two definition at the bottom would be like create user and super create super user. Why do we need this? We need this because uh, when we uh, create a uh, user or super user through terminal then we will be calling those methods okay uh, for super user we will call this method for user we will call this method but uh, using one of the methods uh, will actually require or they will those methods will actually call uh, the private method which is underscore create underscore user method and this method will also be written by us uh, like for me I have actually uh, checked the email is uh, valid or not I have checked password is given or not and I have also uh, normalized the email and I have uh, um, what I did I create a user uh, after getting those um, parameters uh, you know I have after receiving those um, parameters uh, from this method and I made a user and finally I uh, set a password and I saved that user okay and yeah so those three uh, methods are written inside this custom user manager so when we have this custom user manager ready when you have this user manager ready then we can run our migration uh, if you want to uh, understand thoroughly uh, why we have to inherit these uh, built-in built-in parent classes such as like base user manager, abstract base user, or permissions mixing, um, then you have to watch my another video which can be found in the DRF essential playlist. Uh, the title of the video would be uh, use email instead of username in Django authentication. I will leave the link in the description below for you to find the video. Since you have uh, made it uh, this far, uh, can I request you to hit the thumbs up button for me please guys and smash the subscribe button too. Uh, I'm going to cover the entire DRF series, um, possibly the first AP series, uh, system design patterns, interview questions and a lot more. Now that you know the purpose of the channel, you can subscribe to my channel would you please now that we have uh, everything set up uh, we can migrate okay uh, since we have done this now what I have to do I have to go back to this uh, main app inventory I have to go to the settings.py file and over here what I can do I can actually register uh, that core app and also I want to say auth underscore user model equal to I can say code dot user because now I'm letting Django DRF uh, to know where to look for uh, or where to and which user class has to look for because by default it was about to you know create its own fields but now it's gonna go to core and it's gonna find this user and then it will create all the fields for us. And now if I hit control backtick and write python manage.py make migrations, let's see what it does. It says, it says, okay. It uh, actually created a model user as you can see and now we wanna say python manage dot by migrate what is going to do it is going to send all the uh, variables uh, to the database let's see 
I'm going to open up my Postgres database and you might have known um, that my DB is J DJ Inventory DB. I'm going to refresh it. Uh, where is the refresh? Refresh. And it gives me the schema. I'm going to open up that schema. It gives me the tables inside this schema. I'm going to open up that. And probably you have seen that it has created these uh, core user, auth group, blah, blah, blah. So all user model and authentication and authorization models are ready here. Authorization tables are ready here. So I'm going to open up one of those uh, tables like core user. I want to open up that. Uh, so I say view data all rows and let me see what it gives me. And it gives me the, you know, those fields, first name, last name, mobile address, blah, blah, blah is, is active and all those fields. All looks good. So now you know how we can run migration successfully. I'll see you in the next video. Uh, till then, take care. Ta-ta. Bye-bye.